G'day folks. Well over the years we have filmed hundreds of incredibly talented people across the world. Many of these artists have gone on to produce their own videos as well. We hope you enjoy this great lesson from one of our Colour in Your Life artists. Hello everyone. Welcome to number three. This is the third video in the final where I finish this painting and do all the um, detail that uh, brings it all together. And it's often where a disaster is saved. So it's worth watching. <laughs> uh, I hope you enjoy it. Thanks very much. I'll see you at the end. A mm -hmm. little bit of a thing happening up the top here. It starts to get dark when it's leaning over. So I'll do the one behind a little bit brighter. And I'll keep in mind what I've got there. I'll just put this one just touching go there. Okay. On the outer edge is a light, a pale blue that is out here. Now I'm doing really thick here and I'm going to just leave it in spots. I'm going to leave some background spots coming through. Make sure it's blue enough. It's got to look blue. I don't want it to look white. Because this is what the Angophoras, they do. They, they peel off their bark and the half of it's peach coloured and the other half's a sort of a grey. Right. So it's quite light at the bottom there. It's coming down to some little lumpy bits where the old bark is still dark. So I'll just put some there and there. Now on this side I'm going for a deeper grey, bruising grey you could call it. And I'm just going to mark it in spots here and there because that's the way it is. The bark doesn't always come off in one clean sheet on these trees. And I want it really sharp against the background. I want a nice hard edge. Really focused. As if that's where the camera is. That's where your eye goes to. Okay. Um, once again, up the top, oh, I might have to make this a bit softer. I'm getting a bit dry brushy. The brush is drying out a little bit. A couple of lines in there. A few spots up here. Grey underneath there. Okay. Um, just blend some of the inside areas. I want the sharp edge to be sharp, but inside can be quite blended. And I'll add some more. I can see some lumps and bumps that require a little bit of lightening too. So I'll just play around with some textures there. Loose brush, lots of paint on it, and just let it blob around, so to speak. Don't go too, don't try and paint too neat. I'll just exaggerate this, the feet of this. They do tend to come straight into the ground, which is a little bit of a uh, problem. So this one here is actually, it needs to come wider. I don't think I've made it wide enough, so I'm going to now give it that uh, second. Mm, I've got the first one. Or maybe that's the, maybe I'll just make the first one fat. I won't put two in. I'll just put one. One behind, I might put two. So once again, I've got the white on the right side. I'm sort of mimicking the sunlight coming from the right. I think it is this time of day. Mm, now this one at the back is very awkward. Mm, it's quite a dark grey colour. So I'll put the grey in first. Then I'll add the white over the top. And I'll wash my brush so that I can put some plain, clean white on that. Oh, this one. Actually, I really do want to put the second one in. Feels right. They are a little bit wobbly. Put a little bit of brown into it. It's got a little bit of brown coming down, so I'll, I'll warm it up a touch. It's got a fair bit of bright brown here. That's very raw. The one at the back doesn't really. 
I'll put some of that bright brown while I've got done my on my brush on this side. Just to knock out the pink a little bit. Oops. Okay. Bluey, bluey, darky, bluey grey. Yeah. No, not strong enough. I'll do it light over the top of. Oops. Uh, brush is getting. Sometimes you know, a brush starts to fill up with paint. As much as I'm washing it, I'm losing its ability to give me a sharp edge. See how that went fat? I didn't want that fatness. Just try to another brush and just see if I can get a bit of a better attitude out of this brush. Sometimes they have a mind of their own and they start to muck up on you. Very naughty. So what I'm seeing out there is a dark branch, but I want to put in it light because I've got the background so dark. Sort of like a, a moody, a moody sort of scape, a moody landscape. So this comes up like that. So, and once again, if I change my mind, I want these to go dark, I want the background to go light, then I just wait till it dries and I go over the top. So everything's an underpainting until you've decided that's it. So nothing's finalised, nothing's precious. This is quite a black tree, but I'm not sure if I want it to be black. I think I want it to have its sort of circular feel about it. I will go down the, the base of these trees. By golly, that's black. That's what I call black, and I love that down, putting that in down the bottom. It's the old bark, it's gotten a bit rotted. In this case, kind of got the brown. So it helps to vary things, you know, I'll put bluey black there, I'll put a brown here. The two different types of tree. This one here certainly deserves the blue black colour. Spot it up. A few areas there where the bark is stuck. Always helps to put a bit of uh, business up the tree. Busyness, I guess you'd call it, or some details. These trees have got a lot of uh, marks on them. So I run the brush down sometimes to give it a real texture feel. This is the sort of thing that when you finish this, if you want to go back in and add detail in with a fine brush, it's fine to do it at this, on these items, you know, the detail around here. That's good fun. And that's, um, that's sort of like the third stage of a painting. Once you've got it finished at this, at this level and you feel that all the proportions are right and the tones are right, then you can come back and attack it with, uh, with, with the tiny brush and just really paint up all those details. I haven't done a video of doing that yet, but I will soon. How to do the finessing, how to finesse a picture. Okay. So the other thing you can finesse a lot is the the grasses and the, oh, you can do the whole thing. <laughs> let's face it, the detail at the back. Okay, so let's finish this one off. I'm not quite happy with this. I think I've gone too thick on him. So I'll come back in just to show you how I can fix that up. I'm going to put some, a little bit of green on my brush, a little bit of brown to make it look like it's the background there. Come down and I'll stop it right there at that level because that's where the um, stuff's happening at the back. And I'll try and match the muddy wall behind with the rocks. See if I can put that back in. I remember what colours that I was using back there. Definitely got that pink happening across the top. Put that across. Okay, so that's sort of thinned up that area a bit in there. 
put it back. I'll put the brown from the water way down there. Okay. Now, for that particular tree, I think I will add more white to it so that I can punch it out from behind. So, white on this side, or light grey, it is really. Blend it into the middle. And I'll do the same on its, on its other half. I'll start at the top here. Put it I'm going to go really fat with the white here because I want it to punch out. Okay. And I'll just put some fat white there and push it back up. Okay. Support it underneath. Don't have branches or heavy things at high without it being white. You've got to go wider as you go down. This one here, I think I'm going to put some more light spots on the back half. A bit more random there. This tree here, I think I smooth out a bit. A little bit hairy there. So if I just give that a bit of a dance around with a brush, a bit of an angle, something different. Okay. Hmm. I'm just thinking, I still think of that tree. I think I'd like it to be brought out a bit more, so I'll edge that one. It's the way these trees are, that they're lighter on the edges than they are in the middle. That's what I mean when I say I'll edge it. And when the branch is lying over on its side, it's lighter on the top which is fair enough because there's not much reflecting up from underneath so these branches are but on the whole they're light on either side dark in the centre I'll just do it a little bit I won't go totally nuts with that okay lots of detail in amongst this bark here but I won't go putting it all in now I'll just start flicking around a little bit of the detail in the foreground it's a very pale I call it a pale yellow straw that's that's about the best way to describe the front so I'm going to start putting some straw I'll do a sideways smudge like that and then some uprights Have it coming into that water area and have it mixing in with the green that I've already put down. This way you can brighten up a painting by picking out the colours from the foliage, emphasising them. And once again, you've got to just be careful you don't overdo it. If you make it quite wet, you can start doing long, longer. I've got a few long pieces down there of course there's sort of a cooch grass is growing over that area so the, you get a bit of a zigzag effect of the of the uh, the growing pattern and then down the front here of course I love to do detail right in the foreground you can go nuts in the foreground <laughs> I, go, I tend to go nuts in there like this a bit of stronger color let if you've done strong at the back you come f in the foreground and just do some really strong color like I'm trying to get this orange on my brush without too much white on it a bit hard it's kind of my signature so you can develop something a pattern like that that you like to do and do it a lot in your paintings and it becomes your personal style that way and in uh, that way you, it helps with your painting sort of to, to become I guess uniform to, to develop a pattern so 
so back here these all should be lighter so I'll start with this same orangey color and just see if I can get a little bit of light coming through there there's one or two rocks that are sitting over here as well which really and now that I'm thinking should be gray so I'm going into I'm just digging into any old colors because I'm getting close to the finish time now close to finishing this I'm digging into I'm making a bit of a mess of the palette put it that way so there's a rock so if I can mm, make it a little bit yellowy brown on the edge much darker than that okay let's get some more water can okay, chew the water today So now I have to stand back and assess what needs doing. Uh, I think I need to add some interesting foliage at the top at the back, which is greenery, not too dark, but for me, quite blue. Uh, and I'll make it for me. Because I like a sharp edge in the distance, which I shouldn't do. I know it's, uh, traditionally it's not what you do. I tend to like to make the paint fairly wet on my brush so you can get a, a positive dab now some of this up the, right at the top there one of these trees over here there's some yellow foliage it could be <laughs> I hate to say it could be a dying tree or it could be flowers coming out on it or new growth after the rain maybe so I'll just add some I'm going to look for some realism like that here and there that I can actually see and that's proof that it's later on I can look at this painting and go yeah hey there was some hint of you know flowers out there new growth mm, that's a bit awkward that one I won't put color in there I'll try and just patch that bit Let's see if I can go over there like that Okay, now these, these trunks at the back, some of them have to be put back in, in a more positive way. So I'm going to mix up a very strong um, burnt umber and ultramarine to get a really positive black. Wet it. I just want to punch these out. And traditionalists would be freaking now they'd say no 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 you should go really pale you should go really pale so just have that in your mind that if you want to do traditional painting you wouldn't do this but I am very much a modern a modern graphic designer type painter and I know the rules but I'm not going to follow them because I don't want this painting to look a traditional photographic style landscape I wanted to have my own uh, character in it so some of these I'm going to put deliberately behind this branch to make this branch pop out a bit more some really fine ones some thick ones areas where I'll just join them across a little bit sometimes a little bit of a crossbar crosshatch how could you call it area of darkness in a horizontal fashion just to give a, the eye a little rest with all those verticals now I'm going to go really dark just behind here because I know it, I know that that's where the dam overflows and it's quite deep down there yes video number three now a bit of a problem with this one lost a little bit of footage in the camera not um, filming when it should have been not my fault anyway uh, the sad thing is um, I turned the cam I turned the canvas upside down and I gave it a wash over the background to a light white 
watery wash to lighten up all those trees behind. So I made it sort of transparent. Now it's not something I can show you unfortunately, I just have to describe it and I uh, hope you guys can, uh, can follow along and see what happened there. But uh, yeah, that's the way it is, lost that bit. So anyway, I hope you enjoy the, the rest of the video and, uh, and how it's, I finished the painting. Thank you. Mix up a lot of uh, yellow mud again. Oh, yellow mud. So I'm going to go start giving a bit of uniformity to this area. Come across there. Across there. back some of the lights in the trees behind there. So I think I will pop a few more of those background trees out. It's just not me. So I've tried both ways. I've gone that way with the light. And I've, I was originally dark. I've gone to light. Now I'm going back to dark. I do think I prefer to have it stronger like that. And how quick is and easy is it for, to change your mind with acrylics? Like, if you were working on oils, you'd need to wait. Well, for me, I'd probably scrub it off by now and start again. But to make, if I wanted to change your mind. But with acrylics, you can just really, uh, even this, not even dry, to tell you the truth. I'm just going over the top. Oh, and that's beginning to show because it's, I'm not getting as dark as I would like. So probably, sometimes after I finish a painting for a video, I will keep fiddling a little bit. So if you do see it change a little bit after, this is what I'm doing, just more of the same. Adding a bit more of the dark branches. These are the, these are the bushfire trees, so I don't, I kind of do want them there. I want them to look like they're a long way away, but I do want them there quite, so I'll just grab that some more blue and clean brush, I was able to do that. The other thing about back here is some of those trees are right up in the, on that hill. There's a little bit of a hill happening. So, okay, I think I'm getting close to saying I'll call it a wrap. I would like to do some branches up into the sky for various trees that might be there. Always adds a variety of different, you know, of interest to put a few lines. I've got a lovely big dead tree behind, but it's, it's kind of hidden. So I'll do, I won't put it in. I'll put some marks here, just to, just to give a feel for the dense bush. It's quite a strong tree at the back there that I'll put in now that I hadn't bothered to look at before. It's got very strong base on that one. And other than that there the foliage is just a little bit hinted at here and there. Okay. Well from constantly fiddling. I think I'll call that a day. <laughs> it's really hard to stop. I just, oh God, stop it Shirley. I've just got to walk away. Okay, I'll sign it and that'll be it. I've got to stop. Usually once I do this, I look at it again like oh, millions of things I could do change, but I don't. I try not to, but you know, if I have, I like to sign with red, just 
a little traditional thing. A little nod to Chinese painting. I'll put a signature down here. Um, used to be a thing when we were at art school that you didn't sign your work. We thought too cool. We were too cool to sign. That meant your work was too twee. But you know what? My dad made me promise I'd always sign my painting, so I always have. He's a potter and he always signed his pottery, which is great, very handy now. <laughs> we know who, which one's his. Of course, now I can see there's a, a real problem here. I don't like this blue here, so I'm just going to fix that one up. Just one little thing I'll fix up. Honest, promise. And I'm going to just knock it back to the, the green. Just seems a bit odd that that's uh, going down there too. It's too, too much. So I'll just, there you go. Oh, oh. Just blend it in a little bit there. A little bit of dark. That's better. Yep, that's all it needs. I've got a dry brush now. Just going to tap it in, smudge it here and there. By smudging it into the wet parts, you have a great opportunity to hmm, might just fix that a little bit. a little bit too light there. Oops, see what I'm doing? Mm, not sure about that. I'll have to fix that. Okay, I'll fix that with the bottom of that. blue grey colour. That's okay. I'll put it back into there so it matches. Smudging it in quite firmly. Okay. Yeah. I'm thinking that's okay. Yes, the colours are totally different of course. But that's my that's the way, that's my take on, on the Australian bush. I exaggerate colours. Okay. Hi. So, thank you again for watching this video, this set of three, if you've got this far. I appreciate your being here. Um, I, re I really enjoyed doing this one for, um, for Graham Stevenson, what a champion, and for Colour in Your Life and all the team that are working there to produce these fabulous videos. So thank you very much to them, thank you to you for watching, and, uh, and I'll see you. Please like and subscribe to the channel, it's fantastic. You need to watch all their videos, all these videos, they're really good. And uh, the, uh, the artists that uh, Graham features on this show, is, they're pretty special. So 